Do you ever find yourself laying in bed at night and with your eyes closed and surrounded in blackness? You let your imagination take over your mind and then you find yourself thinking of the twilights of ancient cities with lost traditions inscribed in the black stones of their massive buildings. Tremulous dawns over inundated fields, swampy and damp like the air before the sun comes out. The narrow lanes where anything could happen. The heavy chest in old age sitting rooms. The well behind the farmhouse on a moonlit night. The letter dating from when our grandmother whom we never met was first in love. The mildew in the rooms where the past is stored. The rifle no one knows how to use anymore. The fever of hot afternoons next to the window. Not a soul on the road. Fitful slumber, the blight in the vineyards, church bells, the cloistral grief of living. Hour of blessings, your soft, frail hands. The caress never comes. The stone in your ring bleeds in the growing darkness. Religious celebrations, with no belief in our soul. The material beauty of the ugly. Rough-hewn saints, romantic passions lived in the mind. The smell of the sea as night falls in the docks of the city made damp by the chilling air. Your slender hands hover like wings over someone whom life sequesters. Long corridors and cracks around the windows open even when closed, the floor as cold as tombstones, the nostalgia for love like a trip yet to be made to incomplete lands, names of ancient queens, stained glass windows depicting stalwart counts, the vaguely scattered morning light, like a cold incense filling the air of the church and concentrated in the darkness of the impenetrable ground, dry hands pressed one against the other. So that's part of the Book of Disquiet by Pessoa. It's a symphony of the restless night. I'll just talk a little bit about these four books that I had. Well, I won't talk about them, I'll just read from them. They were sitting on my bed because uh, the books that I'm reading like immediately at the moment, I usually leave in my bed for one reason or another. And So these, these were the four. The first one was The Book of Disquiet. The second one is The Collected Poems of T.S. Eliot. And this is from Preludes. The winter evening settles down with smell of stakes and passageways. Six o'clock, the burnt out ends of smoky days. And now a gusty shower wraps the grimy scraps of withered leaves about your feet and newspapers from vacant lots. The showers beat on broken blinds and chimney pots, and at the corner of the street, a lonely cab horse steams and stamps, and then the lighting of the lamps. The morning comes to consciousness of faint, stale smells of beer from the sawdust trampled street, with all its muddy feet that press to early coffee stands. With the other masquerades that time resumes, one thinks of all the hands that are raising dingy shades in a thousand furnished rooms. You tossed a blanket from the bed. You lay upon your back and waited. You dozed and watched the night revealing the thousand sordid images of which your soul was constituted. They flickered against the ceiling from when all the world came back, and the light crept up between the shutters, and you heard the sparrows in the gutters. You had such a vision of the street as the street hardly understands sitting along the bed's edge where you curled the papers from your hair or clasped the yellow soles of feet in the palms of both soiled hands. His soul stretched tight across the skies that fade behind a city block of trampled by insistent feet at four and five and six o'clock. The short square fingers stuffling pipes, stuffing pipes, and evening newspapers and eyes, assured of certain certainties. The conscience of a blackened street, impatient to assume the world. 
I am moved by fancies that are curled around these images and cling, the notion of some infinitely gentle, infinitely suffering thing. Wipe your hand across your mouth and laugh. The world, the worlds revolve like ancient women, gathering fuel in vacant lots. And then next, I'll read a poem by Hart Crane, which is the third book I had. And this one is called Chaplinesque. We make our meek adjustments, contented with such random consolations as the wind deposits in slithered and to ample pockets. For we can still love the world who find a famished kitten on the step and no recesses for it from the fury of the street or warm, torn elbow cupboards. We will sidestep and to the final smirk dally the doom of the inevitable thumb that slowly chafes its puckered index towards us, facing the dull squint with what innocence and what surprise. And yet these fine collapses are not lies, more than the pirouettes of any pliant cane. Our obsequies are in a way no enterprise. We can evade you and all else but the heart. What blame to us if the heart live on, the game enforces smirks, but we have seen the moon in lonely alleys make a grail of laughter of an empty ash can, and through all sound of gaiety and quest have heard a kitten in the wilderness. And finally, I'll read a couple poems here called Improvisations, Light and Snow. And these are from Conrad Aiken, written in the same time that he, that um, all those other bits were written by T.S. Eliot, Crane, and Pessoa. Improvisations, Light and Snow. The girl in the room beneath, before going to bed, strums on a mandolin the three simple tunes she knows, how inadequate they are to tell what her heart feels. When she has finished them several times, she thrums the strings aimlessly with her fingernails and smiles and thinks happily of many things. I stood, I stood for a long while before the shop window, looking at the blue butterflies embroidered on tawny silk. The building was a tower before me, Time was loud behind me. Sun went over the housetops and dusty trees, and there they were, glistening, brilliant, motionless, stitched in a golden sky by yellow, patient fingers long since turned to dust. The first bell is silver, and breathing darkness I think only of the long scythe of time. The second bell is crimson, and I think of a holiday night with rockets furrowing the sky with red and a soft shatter of stars. The third bell is saffron and slow, and I behold a long sunset over the sea, with wall on wall of castled cloud and glittering balustrades. The fourth bell is color of bronze. I walk by a frozen lake in the dun light of dusk. Muffled crackings run in the ice. Trees creak, birds fly, the fifth bell is cold, clear, azure, delicately tinged with green. One golden star hangs melting in it, and towards this sleepily I go. The sixth bell is as if a pebble had been dropped into a deep sea far above me. Rings of sound ebb slowly into the silence. On the day when my uncle and I drove to the cemetery, rain rattled on the roof of the carriage, and talking constrainedly of this and that, we refrained from looking at the child's coffin on the seat before us. When we reached the cemetery, we found the thin snow on the grass it was already darkly transparent with rain, and boards had been laid upon it that we might walk without wetting our feet. When I was a boy and saw bright rows of icicles in many lengths along a wall, I was disappointed to find that I could not play music upon them. I ran my hand lightly across them, and they fell, tinkling. I tell you this, young man, so that your expectations of life will not be too great.
so those are the four books that I had on my bed. Uh, Death is a Gang Boss.